Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we are going to talk about this masterpiece. <laughs> in F major, opus 10, number 8. So much fun to, pl to play, so much fun to listen, so virtuoso, so effective, so spectacular, uh, so impressive, um, a great piece of music, yet very difficult, of course. Uh, as usual with etudes, first we are going to focus on the difficulties which we have in this masterpiece. Of course, well, everybody can see the right hand is very fast, very, very, very fast. So we need great finger technique, fast brain, as I always say. Uh, we have to think very fast, we have to make groups, because that's the only way to play so fast. You don't think about every single note, it's impossible. You make groups. In this case, uh, in this tempo that I play, which is extremely fast, maybe even a little faster than Chopin wrote, like a little, uh, I make groups of eight notes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for me, in my brain, this etude is eight times slower then if we are listening to every single note, right? So instead of I just think bum 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 and it's so slow then listen But of course to think like that we have to practice and we start slowly but we have to practice each group so then next one then and so on we have to be able to play each group as if it's one note well i always explain it during on my lessons with students uh, that uh, this grouping playing chopin etudes is the key is a secret to play it fast and to make the impression that it's easy and to feel okay I mean we feel we, we feel safe and only we have to know this grouping but okay let's go back to uh, our analysis of difficulties of this attitude. because of course this is very difficult usually we start practicing it very slowly and uh, we go faster and faster but now, is it something new? Uh, well, we've already had etudes for fast playing and for the right hand especially we had number one, opus 10, number one. Which uh, apparently is very different from this one because here we have more hidden uh, difficulties um, which I'm going to talk about now. Of course, this fast playing everybody can see, but this video would be pointless if I had only tell you, oh, this, this etude is difficult because we have to play fast right hand. Oh my God, Eureka. He discovered America, as we say in, po in Poland. Well, that's not discovering America. Uh, but now I'm going to show you something that if you are not a musician, maybe you don't know how smart Chopin was he is introducing a new very important problem for every young pianist he uh, 
he introduced it here in the etude number eight, not in number one, number two, not even number three. This is a new problem which I'm going to show you now, which we actually have, uh, especially when we play scales and arpeggios at school. Because what is this problem? This problem is uh, playing um, the thumb under the other four fingers. So the thumb has to be like that and, and still has to move, you know? This is very, very hard because it's very difficult to move. So when we play, um, there are many exercises for that. Um, these exercises are usually very boring because we have, for example, uh, like this. Here, you know, here I have to play. Or like this. Um, show you their left hand so that you can see better so that the thumb is going here right and has to move still has to move and when we have this etude now I show you uh, this problem is all the time all the time because we have to play right of course we usually we don't uh, when in, in a very fast tempo we don't connect those notes and this is what I'm going to tell you soon but this is the problem the problem happens when uh, uh, we, we young pianist and the pianist that doesn't have good technique it happens that um, this kind of passage this kind of um, sorry this kind of um, this kind of uh, our passages are um, they, they sound uneven this is sorry but I have a problem with camera they sound uneven uh, uneven which means we have uh, it sounds something like this and it's impossible to listen I mean it's, you can't play like this right so uh, how do we practice it? Well, the first uh, the first advice which I also always give is to play it with one articulation, like a staccato, non legato, uh, mm, a pinching keyboard. single key has to be played exactly in the same way this is the first step in my opinion to have very good articulation very even playing and after a few weeks of playing like this or months we can start to play it faster generally speaking I think this articulation with a very fast tempo works very well as well because <laughs> have so much fun by playing this at least I have so much fun by playing like this um, with this etude so but okay so this is the first difficulty which as I told you before in scales arpeggios we have to use it all the time uh, because we have only five fingers so when we play a scale well this is the end and we have to continue so we have to use the thumb uh, to continue playing and uh, this is a very common problem and this etude I think should be compulsory for every young pianist to play because, play because it improves very much the thumb and these um, capabilities of um, playing uh, groups of notes like arpeggios and, and so on. But that's not the only difficulty in this etude. Another very uh, important difficulty in this etude is um, independence of two hands and coordinating two hands together because they are completely different and now I show you what's exactly difficult here the left hand has the melody in this etude what we really hear the the message of this etude the, the character is in the left hand This is 
is what we have to practice at the beginning, only left hand as well, so that we are fluent with the left hand, because I can't imagine trying to learn this etude hands together immediately and playing it hands together without mastering every hand, really. Because in this etude, every hand has completely different problems, at least in the first part. Uh, so, but what's really so difficult here? It's a very tricky music, because this sounds so, you know, jumping, very like a dance, maybe, but very happy. Yeah. Now focus on the rhythm and on this very characteristic rhythm with long, short, long. Bam, ba bam. second note short note long we short note sorry we usually don't hear uh, um, in uh, the performances because it's extremely hard I mean of course everything but this is exactly like it should be that's what Chopin wrote and that's what's so freaking hard to do why imagine in the right hand we have groups of four notes one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four in a very fast tempo extremely fast to coordinate these groups of left hand with the right hand we need to play left hand on the first note of the right hand and then on the fourth so pam pa pam Pam, pa pam, pa pam, pa pam, and they have to be perfectly even, right? So in the slow tempo, in slow tempo it's not that hard, but still it's not easy. But in the fast tempo, well, first we have to coordinate them in a the slow tempo. We have to teach the fingers which fingers are together. We have to teach them. When they know, then they will play. But of course, it's really difficult. But how fantastic it is for improvement of our technique, of our brain, of coordination of two hands. Unbelievably fantastic for me. Um, so I think these are most difficult, mo the majority of the difficulties of this etude. Later in the middle part the left hand also has to play uh, very fast, um, just as fast as the right hand, so it's not only the etude for the right hand, both hands must be equally um, fast with good articulation and uh, so, so it also improves both hands. Mm. So, basically, that's all. And now, I think we can focus on the music, focus on uh, because of on the construction a little bit and on the music because it's also very well written piece of music. Uh, in fact. It's a genius piece of music. Because what Chopin is doing here, let's analyze a little the right hand. The right hand is playing, well, when we listen to it very fast, we just listen to down and up and down and up, right? But now, would you believe me if I told you that all this is built on only four notes? motif? Yes, it is. Chopin is taking one little brick of four notes, this four. So there are three notes close to each other and one note which is far from the other three. We like two groups, right? And they go down. This is the main motif of this etude. And this etude is basically 
almost all the etude is built from only those four notes. Motif, listen, this one, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, four times repeat it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? A little bit similar to this. I, 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 maybe you remember I showed you also this. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Then when we are going up, we cannot, I mean Chopin couldn't use this because he would have to continue like this. That would be impossible. So instead, he is taking this brick and he is um, uh, turning it upside down. So instead of three and one down, we start from this one down and then we go, we play this three notes. So only, so only two motifs, this motif, the brick and the brick upside down, all over this etude. Just listen, uh, going up and now time like this right and as I told you before left hand has a very innocent happy jumping full of short notes hard to coordinate with the right hand melody um, so let's listen now um, the the first musical period of this etude because like all Chopin's music also this etude is almost all is built on uh, musical periods. The first musical period is uh, contains uh, two sentences as we call it in music, two phrases, right? Two big sentences. The first is called antecedent phrase uh, and the second is called consequent phrase. We can also call it a question and the answer. Um, and usually in the musical periods, the second phrase should start exactly the same like the first. That's exactly how it is here. Okay, first musical period. Uh, let's listen to the first phrase. <laughs> the first um, sentence and then we started the consequent phrase so the first phrase this first phrase has two parts the first part as we already know and the second part I call it a fanfare I call it like a you know, heroic well let's say heroic with, with chords in the right left hand consequent phrase, the second phrase of the first musical period. The first part will be exactly the same. And after the fanfares, suddenly we will enter a new musical world. Harmonically, uh, the new chord will appear and this will be modulation to uh, the minor key, so darker key. Maybe many of you heard it when you listen to this etude, then it, in some moment this etude we have the beginning of the etude but in minor, so uh, more sad, more dark harmony. That's exactly here the, where it happens. We will have the modulation in the, the end of the consequent phrase of part A. So let's listen to the second phrase now. <laughs> Minor. 
okay so that's the idea of the first part a the, let's call it part a then part b starts part b which is also rather long and has a few parts so let's analyze it first we have the first phrase of the beginning but in minor <laughs> should have fanfares we should have these chords but we don't have it instead we have some kind of bridge uh, but we will have similar fanfares to the but instead left hand will be playing them using octaves so listen Pam, 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 right? So this is um, something that is similar to what we had in part A. Let's listen to this moment. Mm. And then we have, from this moment, we will have a show off of two hands together. Left hand has to play fast, just like right hand. But now, uh, all this middle virtuoso part uh, is built um, only from one brick of four notes. And just listen how fantastically. First we have this, uh, do you remember, three notes and then one note which is far away from these four, three which are close. This is the beginning. Here we have this motif all the time in the right hand going down in music it's called progression it's going down all the time one two three four five six seven eight nine nine times well nine times yes what happens in the right, left hand at the same time This is the same brick but upside down and together and all the time okay and here starts the new part after this showing off this is the part when uh, if a pianist plays it well and if you listen it carefully you can hear motifs from the beginning in the left hand but there is much more in this part than only that we have another progression in the right hand this progression is a progression of mo motif which is longer what is progression once again we have one motif it can be four notes or can be more it can be eight notes the same notes a melody and these notes we take them on journey either we go higher and higher or we go lower and lower uh, here we the, b before we had lower and lower right this lower 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 lower, lower 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 now we will have higher because Chopin is building the energy right hand this is our motif higher 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 and then again the brick upside down and Chopin will use this brick upside down these four notes all the time to build the bridge uh, by which we will approach the beginning of the piece uh, and this bridge is genius because we don't expect we don't know when suddenly we will be at the beginning of the etude my favorite personally my favorite moment in this etude when suddenly we are at the beginning and if you listen to this for the first time it's always a surprise 
So let's listen to this progression and before let's focus on the left hand because left hand here has a motif from the beginning. So again we have the problems with coordination. Listen. And we are at the beginning of the piece. Okay, so let's listen to this middle part one more time, but in a slower tempo. This will make us uh, more, um, how to say, um, conscious of what is going on here. So we start from the minor theme one. of the right hand and in the left hand we have the main theme. my friends for me when I approach when I played I imagine I mean I can't stop thinking of this that suddenly in the on, on earth the, I mean the earth just split into half like you know like just like this and we have this big hole this harmony here which Chopin used <laughs> It's a fantastic moment and this moment opens something and we approach the coda the last part of the etude um, it's an it's another surprise because we don't expect after this we, we had two options we had first time we had we had this so ha 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 second time we had the modulation so do you remember modulation to minor and now we have this sudden forte fortissimo the coda. Coda is just like the beginning. Right hand is playing fast uh, but it's of course difficult but it's all hidden. So typical Chopin. It should not sound difficult. It should just sound like a beautiful accompaniment. Accompaniment. You know now we come to the point. In 99% of etudes for the right hand written before Chopin right hand was the most important left hand was only accompanying was only had some chords accompanying chords here left hand has something to say 
and the right hand is very difficult but has to be hidden only accompanying to the left hand so let's listen to the coda the left hand of the coda because this is what we should focus on <laughs> it's using the same mot motif as the beginning and of course we have to master left hand alone uh, before we play it together to sing with the left hand and the right hand is only some kind of little lights or stars or some jewelry very very light and accompanying the left hand so beautiful this is this is extremely beautiful let's listen to it a little bit slower two hands Focus on the left hand and somewhere in the background, stars or birds or whatever you want, but just pure beauty. of course not of course you know this attitude I'm sure maybe well I don't think there is anybody here who listened to this attitude for the first time if there there is congratulations I'm jealous because here Chopin is putting up the biggest surprise of all the attitude but you know I I say to my students very often this which is very difficult actually to do that we should always play um, the piece of music as if we don't know it, as if we are playing it for the first time, as if we are listening to it for the first time, because only then we can be aware of all the beauty, unexpected things, uh, surprises. This all is beauty of music. If we, you know, this attitude, if you listen to Chopin competition, if you listen to competition, if you are a pianist, you've heard it a thousand times you know every note you just know it even if you don't know how to play it you know how it sounds how hard it is to put ourselves to this state that we don't know what will happen because here we don't expect anything like that everything uh, fade away disappears into the thin air um, uh, just listen to this and and suddenly Chopin is bang like uh, almost you know almost we we fall asleep or we are dreaming and suddenly we have the last statement of pianist virtuoso very uncomfortable <laughs> two hands they are playing the same exactly the same notes but of course fingering is different because these hands are like a mirror you know so uh, that's why it's not so comfortable ends forte fortissimo that's what Chopin writes although I really love to end it uh, soft but I know I can't because Chopin didn't want to uh, so I try to control myself and finish just like Chopin wanted anyway that's just a digression so that's all that's how this attitude is built um, of course how to practice well I showed you already this 
definitely we should focus on the coordination between two hands. We should uh, master thoroughly every hand separately. Uh, we should consider this etude as the etude for both hands, so as if left hand alone has the etude and right hand alone, and only then, like a chamber music, they play together. So, uh, that's everything. Uh, what we can do now is we can uh, once again go through this etude um, with analysis while playing, play it a little slower so that we can be aware of everything what's going on. Remember, left hand has the melody, it's obvious. Right hand is uh, built uh, by one brick made of four notes. Sleep and suddenly <sighs> thank you very much for watching this episode and see you again in my next episodes about Chopin's Etudes. And if you didn't watch my other videos about other pieces of Chopin and if you have time to do it I will be very happy to see you in my other videos. Bye bye!